Hi, Nick Agar with you once more from Dictum's Workshop. Today we're going to discuss secondary bevels, micro bevels, and perhaps where we may soften the heel of a tool, why we do this and their uses, and how they help us in our turning jobs. Let's go to the grinder and see how we go. On a bowl gouge, it can sometimes be a good idea to put a secondary bevel in place. This shortens the length of the bevel, particularly useful if we're pushing the gouge through a very tight curve. So we'll now sharpen this. So finding my existing grind angle by placing the jig in the V-arm and the bevel resting on the stone like this, all I need to do is loosen the nut and rock the tool backwards and I'm looking for something roughly halfway between this gap on the bevel and the heel. To put a secondary bevel on this grind using the Tormek couldn't be simpler. I can adjust using this slider up and down at any given position. I'm going to go all the way to the full extension in this instance, grind away the heel, or some might say the bottom of the bevel angle, until I reach the desired point that I want to stop. Clear to see and easy to do. So with the undercut on this bowl, the secondary bevel is going to really help because it shortens the length of the cutting edge to the bottom of the bevel. And when I want to get around this tight curve, there is less chance of the cutting edge being pushed off the wood. On the subject of double bevels, if we're not going to grind a secondary bevel on the tool, we must consider the fact there's a sharp transition between the base of the bevel and uh, the bar that it's ground on. So um, this sharp area can actually bruise the wood as you push it through a curve. We're going to simply take a diamond file and soften it. Place the gouge on a bench, standing to the side so you can see over the edge. Using the diamond file, we're just going to soften the heel using a circular motion until we have rounded this part where the bevel ends at the bottom. On some really hard woods, denser timbers, it can be useful to put what may be called a micro bevel, a very short bevel, so that when we have contact with the end grain versus the side grain, for example, and we're pushing through a cut, there is less bounce off this surface. After all, we only actually do need a small amount to rest on at the front. So we're going to put a smaller bevel on the front of this, and the secondary bevel will be removed at a steeper angle. So to leave a micro bevel, or very short bevel, on this tool, I'm going to unwind the wheel two complete turns on the Tormek, push it in, lock it down, and I've put a black marker pen on here so that we should be able to see what we have left. So when we finish grinding our secondary bevel, leaving a micro bevel of around two millimeters of our original chosen angle. Perfect, ready to go. So using this gouge with a micro bevel, let's try 
cutting this very hard exotic wood. Beautiful finish, as you'd expect from a grind like this. So now we're going to sharpen the Stuart Mortimer gouge, a tool designed by Stuart for hollowing. It's a specialist gouge, so we have some important things to think about. In this instance, using the Wolverine jig, I'm going to put the tool in and give it a projection of 75 millimeters. Care needs to be taken in positioning the jig on the gouge because it has a short flute enabling stability while it reaches over the tool rest. So I'm going to look down the end and check that I have it level because it doesn't have a flat area to sit on. The other important distinction is that I'm taking the Wolverine jig right to the front past position one and we're going to call that zero. So this arm is swinging all the way completely to the front and being locked. I'm also going to take a measurement of 17 and a half centimeters from the V arm until it enters this section of the Wolverine jig. That gives me a correct distance between the V-arm and the wheel. The first grind, and this will have four facets on it, is going to be done like this. Starting on the side, slowly swing it all around. Till we have an even grind and the first sharp edge and bevel are created. In order to round this away evenly now, we're going to move back in steps. First one is to move this to position number two on the notches on the Wolverine jig. We now grind the second bevel. I'm not trying to reach the top or the edge of the tool, just enough to begin to round it. Now I move to notch three, very simply. Back in the V-arm. Try and keep the spaces between the bevels fairly even. Now to number four. And now, rather importantly, we're going to soften the heel completely at the end. This will be done by hand, using the top of the wheel, gently rotate the tool from side to side, very gentle pressure, and we now have our tool ready to use. Just a few rules, but quite a simple procedure to get the desired result. So on the Stuart Mortimer gouge, if you don't wish to grind freehand, take a coarse side, so the blue in this example of the diamond file, and with a circular motion, being careful, keep the angle changing, it's very easy to soften and round the bevel over at the base. So working on this vessel, one advantage of the Stuart Mortimer gouge is the fact that it does help exit shavings up the flute and out of the vessel, preventing so much blockage. So I'm going to go in safely with the tool over on its side at 9 o'clock, then I'm going to pick the cut up, and as you can see, 
the shavings are coming mostly back out of the vessel. So I hope you found our sharpening tips useful here at Dictum's workshop and we hope to see you on a class soon.